It's a great day to be alive in Christ. Welcome to Hope for Salvation Broadcast. My name is Brother Paul. Check out our YouTube channel at www.youtube.com slash at Hope Evangelistic. Also, check out our website, hopeevangelistic.org. On that website, we have some downloads to help you with biblical interpretation, to help you understand the Bible better. Amen. It's, it's a good website for you to check out. But, view if you're going to view the website, view it on your desktop or your laptop. It does not show up well on a tablet or on your phone. So, view it on your desktop or your laptop and you can see the full website. You can also give an offering if you want to, if you so choose to give an offering. But we are asking for 24 partners to give $150 to help us to pay for airtime in our TV broadcast to the Raleigh metro area. Now, let's get on to the broadcast and see what God is saying to us today. I know that's been a lot to swallow, so check out the website, hopeevangelistic.org, and we'll see what what's going on there. Now let's see what God is saying. To deal with sin. Amen. Amen. We're going to start with Romans 6, 12 through 14. And I'm not going to, I'm trying my best not to go too fast. I'm going to try my best to take my time. Amen. I get excited sometimes. Amen. Romans 6, do not let sin control the way you live. I'm reading from the NLT. Do not let sin control the way you live. Do not give in to sinful desires. It says, do not let, do not allow, do not give permission for sin to control the way you live. We, we as Christians... We have a lot that we have to deal with. And we have the same things to deal with that everybody else in the world has to deal with. But we are Christ-like. We are set apart. God has set us apart, sanctified us, set us apart. But we also have to set ourselves apart. And in order to, 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 to keep ourselves as Christians and and look more like Christ, we have to manage sin. I said, we have to manage sin. The, 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 the scripture says, do not let or do not allow, do not give permission. Do not give permission. That what it's saying is, you need to manage your thought life. You need to manage your thought life. Think about this. Think about this. Every sin that comes in, it comes in through some gate. It comes in through your, your hearing, your, your, your seeing, even your, sm even your smelling. Something prompts you to it. So, what we have to do is learn how to our, how to manage the thoughts that come into our minds. Is this of God? Is this not? Now, under under normal, under another circumstance, I would see that would be pretty difficult because we have thoughts coming all day long. But, we have God's Spirit in us. We have God in us. God the Holy Spirit resides in us. And He's there as a what? Helper. Everybody knows what I'm saying. He is a helper. He is not a doer. Uh-oh, what you say, bro? I said, he's a helper. He is not a doer. He will not do it for you, but he will help you. Now, I wanted to, 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 to start there, and then I want to jump over to James, if you allow me, to jump over to James just for a minute. And, and 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 bring this in, so that so that you'll understand what, where I'm at. James, the second chapter. Am I right? I think I am. 
James the second chapter in the 15th verse says James the first chapter in the 13th verse I'm sorry said let no man say when he is tempted I am tempted of God for God cannot be tempted with evil neither tempteth he any man but every man is tempted when he is drawn away by his own lust and entice. Then when lust has conceived, it bringeth forth sin. And sin, when it is finished, bringeth forth death. So, I want to I, I bring that in that when every man is tempted, he is drawn away of his own lust. It's, it's the lust in us. It's the lust in our flesh, in our members. Our de all, every, every part of our body has a desire of its own. And we have to manage that by way of the Holy Spirit. It's so important that we rely on the Holy Spirit. And I don't care if you're a new Christian or you've been saved a year or two or if you've been saved 20, 30, 40 years. You still have to rely on the Holy Spirit to help you to manage the things that come into your mind and the thoughts that come into your mind, the things that you see with your eyes, and the, and the things that you hear, even the things that you taste. All of these different things are important. Now, one scripture I did not give you, and that's First John. Second chapter. Just want to bring this in so we have all three scriptures. First John, second chapter, in the fifteenth and the sixteenth verse. It says, Love not the world, neither the things that are in the world. If any man love the world, the love of the Father is not in him. For all that is in the world is the lust of the eye, the lust of the flesh, the lust of the eyes, and the pride of life. Is not of the Father, but it's of the world. It is of the world. We want, we want to do things that are of the Father. We want to do the things that pleases God. And in order for us to please God, we have to determine, first of all, that I'm going to live for God. It's, it's just that simple. I want to live for God. Now, if you determine in yourself that you want to live for God, you give that brazen testimony in church, oh, I want to live for God, I want to do better for God this year. And, and, and that's a good thing to say. But let me tell you something. Opposition is going to come. Opposition is going to come just because you made the statement. Well, Brother Paul, what do you mean? I mean that the opposition will come to test if you really mean what you say. So be careful what you say out of your mouth. A lot of times, and we have to look, listen to this, listen to this. A lot of times, we give the enemy the hammer to beat us over the head with, with our mouth. We say things out into the atmosphere, not knowing that there are demons and, and there are angels around us. There are demons around us. But they're here. They're hearing what you are saying. And they're dealing with you. They're marking it down. He likes this. Hmm? He, oh, he, like, he does this. Oh, he worships this. And those are the things that we say out of our mouth that, 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 they bring back and attack us with, and then we find ourselves in a great temptation. You say, well, Brother Paul, you mean to tell me I'm saying things out of my mouth? You, you sure are. You, you might just be talking to a friend. You might be talking to a family member. But you are saying it. And guess what else? It ain't always words. Do you know we talk more with our bodies than we do with our mouth? Our body language says a lot. Our body language is saying a lot. Hmm? And some people can read body language better than others. But 
Our body language is saying a lot. And there are people that can read you. But then again, there are also our enemies that surround us. Remember, we are in a, in a, in a warfare. We are in warfare and the enemy is out to take you out. He's out to take you down. But we know he can't because he's a defeated foe. Hello, listen to me. He's a defeated foe. But what he tries to do is get you to sin and then he hammers it into your head. He hammers it, hammers it, hammers it and try to put all kind of guilt trips on you and try to take you out. But the Holy Spirit is in there that can hold you up and let you know, yes, you made a mistake. Yes, you sinned, but confess that sin. Run to God. Now, let's go. <sighs> See, I told you, I'm trying not to go fast. It's just, it's just hard. Romans 6, back to Romans 6. Do not allow sin to control the way you live. Nobody, nothing, no demon, no nothing can make you do anything. And God won't even make you do anything. You are a free moral agent. You are a free moral agent. You can do whatever you want to do. But nobody can make you do anything. You do it because you want to. Because of the desires, the lust of the eye, the lust of the flesh, and the pride of life. Those three categories of, of sins, the lust of the flesh, the lust of the eye, and the pride of life. They encompass all of the sins. If you look back at Jesus' three temptations from, from the devil, when he took him up on a high pinnacle, those three, those three temptations represent the lust of the eye, the lust of the flesh, and the pride of life. He's, he went through every temptation that we would go through. Hmm? Yet without sin. Well, Brother Paul, what are you saying? I'm trying to get, get across to everybody today that you do not have to yield yourself. You do not have to succumb to every, every desire that's in your body, that's in your mind, that's in your thought. Some people like me talk a lot, but I've learned to, 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 to manage my talk. Hello? I've learned to manage my talk by, by the word of God so that what's coming out is of the Lord. Hmm? And not just any old thing. But there are some people that they cannot manage what they say out of their mouth. If it comes to mind, it comes out. And that's, that's sin too. Yes, it's sin too. But we have to learn how to manage this life, this Christian life. Well, you said, well, Brother Paul, you said that the Holy Spirit is in there to help me. So how's he helping me? He's letting you know not to yield yourself to that. He's prompting you all the time not to go there, not to do that, not to dwell on that thought, hmm? not to dwell on that person. Hello? He's, he's, he's yielding, he's, he's, Giving you something that can help you to pull away from the direction he's going. He has a rod and a staff huh? that, that, that leads and guides us to where we should go. And, 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 and you know, I've actually been driving. Hello? Uh, you, you, you said, no, wait a minute. What are you talking about driving? Yeah, because I, uh, my foot get a little heavy. You know what I mean. And I'm speeding, and the Holy Spirit will say, slow down. And I say, oh, okay, I, I know it's the Spirit, so I slow down. And I've slowed down sometimes, and there's a cop right ahead, right up above the hill. Right over the next hill, there's a police officer sitting out there with his radar. Ah, oh, he saved me from getting a ticket. 
Yeah, but he also saved you from some other things. You don't realize what's going on. We have to obey the voice of the Spirit. Sanctification includes a whole lot of things. But the thing that we want to deal with is how we can obey the Holy Spirit. And when we do sin, hello, listen to this, when we do sin, run to God. What did you say, Brother Paul? When you sin, run to God. Don't stay away from God. Come on, and don't stay stay away from church. A lot, a lot. I, 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 I've been around a long time, so I've, I've seen a lot. But 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 I know I, I I've had people to call me at, at four o'clock in the morning in the in the evening after the, after morning service is over, and and they will call me and say, "But Paul, I I I couldn't come to church because I got into some stuff last night." I was doing some stuff I shouldn't have been doing, so I didn't want to come in. I said, no, 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 no. That's when you run. You come to church. Don't get, a, don't go away from God. Run to God. Confess that thing. If you, if it's got a hold of you, then you don't want it to keep a hold of you. You want to get it off of you. Hmm? You, you want it to get, you want to get it off you. I remember one time. I was going to this church. I won't call the name of the church. But, but but as I was walking toward the church, the devil, the devil talks. And the devil spoke to me and said, he going to cast the devil out of you if you go in there. I said, well, that's what I want. <laughs> Get him out. Get him out. Get him out. I want you out of my life. These are the things that we we have to realize is that we we want to walk closer to God. We want to resemble Christ. That's what Christian means, Christ-like. In our walk, our Christ was sinless in his walk on the earth. He had the same body that we have, same flesh, same desires, yet he did not sin. We, we may not make it there. We won't make it there in this lifetime. But, we are striving every day to get there, hmm? to look more and more like Christ. Not only in not sinning, but also in doing the things that Christ did. What did he do? He raised the dead. He cast out devils. Huh? He healed the sick. He delivered for. Well, wait a minute, Brother Paul. I'm supposed to do all that? You're supposed to be all, do all that to resemble Christ, if you're Christ-like. Oh, uh, I'm just in the first scripture. Do not let sin control the way you live. Okay? Again, it says, do not give in. Do not allow sin to control the way you live. And then it says, 12th verse, do not give in to sinful desires. In other words, the temptation is on you, but don't give in. It's all over you. You want to do it because the desire is in you. And you want to do it. But the Bible says here, don't give in to sinful desires. Stand. Take a stand. I might want to do it, but I ain't going to do it. I have to talk to myself. I have to talk to my flesh and tell my flesh to come in line to the word of God. Hello? That ain't easy. But it's a thing you have to learn to do. Hmm? Do not let sin control the way you live. Do not give in to sinful desires. Do not give in. Can't nobody make you. If you don't give in, then nobody can make you. Hmm? Nobody can make you. You, you do it, every man sin, when he's drawn away by his own lust. Now listen to this. You know about drawn away... Drawn away is not is not somebody grabbing you by the neck and dragging you. Drawn away is small steps, small baby steps, little at a time, little at a time. I remember when I was a little boy and, and, and when I lived on the knot in Shelby, North Carolina, I, we we used to catch, well I used to catch, there wasn't nobody else catching them but me, but I used to catch birds. 
You say you catching birds? Yes, 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 yes. I put a stick and prop the box up and tie a string onto the box and I will put breadcrumbs down and then put a pile of breadcrumbs inside the box. And I'd watch the bird eat. Standing, I'd be my string would be in my window, in my bedroom window, and, and I watched the birds. They be eating, 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 and then they go inside the box to get the, 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 the big bunch of, of breadcrumbs and I pull the string and the box come down. And I ca I, I caught the birds. You say, well, Brother Paul, what they got to do with what we're talking about? Well, that's the way, that's the way the enemy is, is, is warps us. He puts a little bit down because he's studying us. He's watching us. And he said, oh, he likes this. So let me put one here. Did he take it? Oh, he took it. Put another one right there. Did he take it? Yeah, he took it. Did he put another one over here. Did he take it? Yes, he took it. Well, Brother Paul, Brother Paul. What in the world wrong? What's going on? What's going on, Brother Paul? Who? You're being drawn away by your own lust. You're being drawn away little by little. He don't tell, he don't tell nobody, go commit adultery. That's, that's too easy. Wait, no, that all, that's sin. Adultery is sin. He starts out doing some small things. You have to be careful. My wife said, you're too friendly. And, 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 and I smile and say, hello, how are you? And, and some, somebody take that the wrong way and they want to flirt. Hello. And I have to be careful because I don't have to flirt back. Hello. So I can come against what's going on. It's easy to be drawn away by your own lust. And then entice, but when you know where it leads to, you don't, you don't have, you don't have to be bothered with that. You say, well, brother Paul, you, 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 you're a man. Yeah, yeah, yeah. And, and, and see, a lot of people think that a man ain't supposed to be able to resist a woman. And if she's pretty, it's very hard. Or if she's beautiful, then, 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 then you don't even try. But that, that's not true. That's not true. Just because you're a man, that don't mean you got to give in to... A man don't mean sinful. We can stand against a while. So, the devil, let me tell you something. I've been married almost 45 years. In a couple of months, it'll be 45 years to my beautiful, drop-dead, gorgeous wife. And I've never even kissed another woman. I, I never let nothing get that close, that, that get that far. See, see... Kissing is just another step in the progression toward adultery. Hmm? Never get to the point that, 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 that you're touching somebody else. Well, Brother Paul, how did you do that? It wasn't always easy. It's easy now. But at first, when I first got saved, it was difficult. But I found that I wanted to. There was something on the inside of me that wanted to. And then after a couple of years, it, it got easier. I said, now, now, it's, it, it, it's, 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 it's gotten to a place that I can say, I've done it for a couple of years. I can do this. Hello? I've been doing this for a couple of years. And I can do this. And I've learned some things along the way. What not to do. Hmm? What not to do. And where not to go. Hello? See, sometimes, hello, and, we, and, and this is in the lesson, sometimes we are presenting ourselves to be, sent, to be put in a sinful position. Let's read. Do not let sin control the way you live. You're going to hear it again. Do not give in to sinful desires. Do not allow, do not let, do not permit, do not give permission for any part of your body become an instrument of evil to serve sin. Do not allow any part of your body to become an instrument of evil to sin. I remember when I was a young Christian. Now, 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 y'all, y'all, y'all gonna say this, this crazy because 
because because because of the because of my head. But but I'm I'm gonna tell you, I was I've always been a joking kind of fellow, and I was in the supermarket. I was by myself, and this man in front of me had a bald head. I had plenty of hair then, and his head was big. He had a big head. He didn't have no regular size head like mine. He had a big head. And the thought came, listen to this, the thought came, smack him on his head. <laughs> listen to me, listen to me, listen to me. And I laughed. I laughed. I was a Christian. I was a new Christian. And I laughed. But I, I had enough sense not to smack that man upside his head. But the thought came, smack him upside his head, his head like it needed to be smacked. Smack him upside his head. But I said, no, no, no. I know who that is. I know who that is. We we have to be careful. See, there, there, there are more than one way to sin. There's thousands of ways of sinning. Hmm? Don't allow your body, any part of your body, to become an instrument of evil. To serve sin. Instead, give yourself completely to God. For you were dead, but now you have new life. Mm -hmm. So use your whole body as an instrument to do what is right for the glory of God. Sin is no longer your master. For you will no longer live under the requirements of the law. Instead, you live under the freedom of God's grace. We're under grace, we're not under law. But we're still, because we are Christians, we want to be Christ-like. We want to live for Christ. Hmm? Sanctification, we've all, oh yeah, God is sanctified. He set us apart isn't it, for, himself, for His use, and that's good. But we have, we, have, we have to be set, we have to set ourselves apart also. We have to set ourselves apart that we are not. So what am I trying to tell you? I'm trying to tell you that you can. You can make it. You can get on top of this thing. But it takes effort. And it takes the word of God. And it takes the Holy Spirit in you to get on top of this thing. Now, let's look at James again. Let's look at James one more time. And then we'll be through. I think I don't want to. I don't want to speak too fast. <laughs> I don't want to speak too fast. Amen. Amen. James one thirteen says, "Let no man say when he is tempted, I am tempted of God, for God cannot be tempted with evil, neither tempted he any man." So God ain't putting nothing on you. God ain't putting no temptation on you. That ain't no trial. That ain't no teaching. That ain't that ain't none of that. Don't let nobody put that on you. But look at this. But every man is tempted when he is drawn away of his own lust and enticed. Hmm? You're drawn away. Hmm? Enticement said enticement it means that something looks good to you. It, it, and you're gonna go toward it. Hmm? You're drawn away, just like the birds were eating the eating the breadcrumbs. Mm -hmm. You could be drawn away to this thing, the thing that that the the If let, let me say this, there are some things now forty forty three years in, forty three years being being saved, forty three years in, I can say that they. I don't know. I'm, it don't even, it's not even a temptation anymore. Hmm? It's not. It's not even a temptation anymore. Some things just ain't a temptation no more. You're not going to be tempted to do something that you don't like. You hear me? Temptations come when you want to do it. Temptation is something that you desire, but it's wrong. Temptation entices you because you want to. It's a temptation because you want to. It's not a temptation. 
if you don't want to. You can walk right by some things. Mm -hmm. I live right beside uh, MGM. I live right beside MGM, the gambling place. That don't bother me because I've never had a gambling habit. I've never been a gambler. <laughs> I gambled one time when I was in the Navy. And they took all my money. I ain't gambled since. <laughs> Amen. One time. One time. I had I have no I have no way that I want that I can be tempted to gamble. Hmm. Yeah, I know the the, the lotto was one point three five and that was tempting because I, I told my wife one time, I said, When you get a billion dollars, that's when I'll play. <laughs> and it became a billion dollars, I said, Whoops. <laughs> I didn't know it would ever get that high. But, think about it. Think about it. It's only tempting if it's something you want. Just like that lotto. A billion dollars? I'm going to say I'm going to take a half of that. Uh, One billion, three, five million? Hmm? Three hundred and fifty million? One billion, three hundred and fifty million. That's a whole lot of money. That's tempting. And then the the, the, the enticement is you got to play to win. <laughs> you got to play to win. If you don't play, you don't win. I was in the I was in the gas station getting some gas. I had to go in and pay for my gas. I had cash. And I went in to pay for my gas. And when I went in to pay for my gas, the 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 the, the register and the and the and the place to uh and the place to uh buy your tickets was right there together. It was right there together, and it was a couple of people up there behind it. I saw a lady, she came out with a fistful of, 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 of lotto cards, and she was holding them up like she was praying. <laughs> Hello? And I looked over there, I said, $1.35 billion. That's a whole lot of money. But I said, but God. You can bless me with whatever I need. You say, well, Brother Paul, you did what? You said what? You didn't buy that ticket? No, I didn't buy that ticket. I trust God to do whatever whatever I need, God got it. Hello? Whatever I got, whatever I need, God got it. Hmm? 14 said, but every man is tempted when he is drawn away of his own lust and enticed. Somebody said, I bought me a ticket. I heard you. I bought me a ticket. Hell, $1.35 billion? I wouldn't have to want for nothing. You don't know what you're going to have to want for. Mm, you get all that money, that money be all ran you crazy. Hello? Good. Somebody said, good way to go crazy. <laughs> I hear you. I hear you. I hear you. $1.35 billion. Yes, indeedy. Yes, indeed. That's a whole lot of money. But let me tell you something. Every man is tempted when he's drawn away of his own lust and enticed. Hmm? It has to be something in you. I've never been a gambler, so gambling ain't never been a temptation to me. Hmm? But there are temptations out there. There are some things that I used to drink. That's not a temptation anymore. I used to smoke herb. That's not a temptation anymore. I used to snort cocaine. That's not a temptation anymore. I used to I used to do downers. That's no temptation no more. I used to do speed. That's no temptation no more. I used to smoke hash. That's not a temptation anymore. I used to do sacred mushroom, but that's not a temptation anymore. I don't desire any of those things. And I won't go on because y'all say you don't name enough. <laughs> you behave crazy all, all that stuff you did yes indeed that's why I had to renew my mind with the word of God mm -hmm. but every man is tempted when he's drawn away of his own lust huh see you got your own lust what are you saying brother Paul I said you got your own lust your lust and my lust ain't the same lust hmm your evil desire is not the same as mine. We all have to deal with temptation. But we, we, some people have to deal with multiple temptations because of their lifestyles, what they've been doing already before they get saved. When I came out of the world and I came to Christ, uh, 
I accepted Christ as my Savior, I had a I had a baggage load. It didn't disappear at one time. Oh man, it didn't disappear at all at once when I first got saved. But after a year or so, I got I got delivered. And he took everything. The drinking, the drugging, hello, the cussing. All of it. He took it all at one time. You see, he used to cuss by the power. I was a sailor. <laughs> I didn't cuss like a sailor. I was a sailor. Hear me. The things that you used to do. The things that you used to do. You don't do no more. If you're new in Christ, there may be some things that, that you used to do that's still bothering you. But guess what? If you don't give permission to those things, if you don't go to the place where those things are, then you'll be okay. You say, what, Brother Paul? I said, if you don't go to the place where those things are, you'll be okay. I used to think that, I used to think that trouble followed me. Trouble wasn't following me. I was going to the trouble. Hmm? Don't present yourself. Don't present yourself in, in a position where you will be tempted. Don't go. There's so many things I want to bring out, but we got some teenagers here and I don't want to go there. Mm. Look at 15 and then I'm going to finish. Then when lust has conceived, in other words, when it's gone from your head down into your emotions, when it gets down into your soul, it bringeth forth sin. In other words, as long as it's up here in your head, you can fight it. Once it gets down in here, you, you're looking to do it. You're looking for a way to do it. How can I do it? You, you, you can't tell me, <laughs> listen to this, you can't tell me, oh, I up and, and, and committed adultery. It, it's too many things have to happen. It's, it's, it's too many processes that have to go on for that. I, you didn't just up like you called a cold. Hello? Too many processes. It's a process. Too many things have to be in place in order for it to happen. You present it yourself. Oh! Brother Paul, Brother Paul. Then when lust has conceived, it bringeth forth sin. It's gonna, it's gonna happen once it's conceived. Huh? Huh? Just like a woman conceived, <laughs> she's going to bring forth a baby. Lust has conceived, it's going to bring forth sin, you're going to sin. So deal with it up here before it gets down in here. When it gets down in here where you desire it so much that you're going greedily after it. Whoa, Brother Paul, you said a mouthful. I've said enough for today. Hmm? We're not going to be sanctified totally until we die. You're not going to be set apart for God's use until you totally die. But that don't mean that God won't use you. God will use you, but what you have to do is maintain your fellowship with God. Maintain that fellowship. When you sin, confess that sin. Go back to God. I sinned. I was wrong and you were right. You were right and I was wrong. And guess what? That will always be the case. It will never be reversed. You are always wrong and God is always right. <sighs> Brother Paul, Brother Paul, are you sure? I'm 100% sure the Bible tells me so. Hmm? For the Bible tells me so. I am telling you, whenever you mess up, run to God. Get it right. Maintain your fellowship with God so you can be in. But don't run from God. Run to Him. Don't run away. Run to Him. Don't run away from Christian people. Run to them. Hmm? Run to somebody that you can trust. And, 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 and deal with it. I'm having issues. I got problems. I need, I need somebody to help me. 
help, help. I'm in a situation. I need somebody to help me to get through this. And guess what? There are people out here, they call them pastors and teachers, evangelists, pastors and prophets and apostles. They call them all kinds of things. And then you have some leaders in your church that you can go to. And guess what? You ain't going through nothing that ain't nobody else been through. You ain't, your temptation is, is, is common to man. Hmm? But God will, with the temptation, give you a way to escape. And I'm showing you the way to escape. Yield not to it. Hmm? Don't yield to it. Don't give permission. Do not allow it. But do it up here. Do it up here. It's very hard to do it once it gets down in here. Let's take the easy path. Hmm? The battlefield is in the mind. The battlefield is in the mind. Hmm? How are you going to deal with your sin? You're going to capture it right here. You capture sin right here. And you cast it out. Hmm? And then you're going to have to get to the place that you don't go where sin is. Hmm? Don't go to sin. Don't run to sin. Run to God. Amen and amen. Now, I'm through. Amen. I'm through. But let me say this. If you have not accepted Jesus Christ as your Lord and Savior, sin can run dom can dominate you. Sin can run rampant in your life. You have to have a relationship with Jesus Christ. You have to become his child in order for him to put his spirit in you for him, for the spirit to help you to live the Christian life. We say, well, Brother Paul, how in the world do I do that? You must be born again. You must be born again. No doubt about it. You must be born Again, God loves you. He loves you enough that he would send his only son to die in your place, to walk in the sinful body yet without sin, and die on the cross in your place. That's love. That's love. That's love. He loves you enough to die in your place. You deserve to be on that cross. But he died in your place so that you can get forgiveness of sin. He will forgive you if you turn from your sin and turn to God. Hmm? That's conversion. Turning from sin, which is repentance, turning to God, which is faith in Jesus Christ. The work that he did on the cross was for me. It's personal. It's for me. God loves me. He loves me so much he died for me. God, I for, just, just just call out to God. God, I'm turning from sin. I don't want to. I don't want to live that life. I, I need a new. I, I need a new. I need a change. I need a change in my life. I believe that Jesus Christ died on the cross for me. He died in my place, hmm? and He rose from the grave on the third day. Hmm? Say it. Say it. Say it. Speak it from your heart. Call out to God. I believe you died on the cross in my place. You were raised on the third day. Forgive me of my sins. Come into my heart and save me. Save me from myself. Save me from my sins. I need saving. God, I thank you for sending Jesus to die in my place. I thank you that I've accepted him as my Savior. He saved my soul by dying for my sins. Thank you, Jesus, for saving my soul. In Jesus' name, amen. And amen and amen. Now, if you've done that, give us a call. The number is on the screen. Give us a call. We'll, we'll pray with you. We'll give you some guidance on where you can go to church so that you can grow and become Christ-like. You need to become Christ-like.